I'd love to invite Anna to turn her camera on so I can introduce her to you all. But I'm sure she she already knows a lot of you and you already know a lot about her uh, as an amazing midwife and educator. <laughs> so welcome, Anna. Hi, thanks so much, Jane. It's lovely to be here. And I'm thanks gonna go ahead. Me. I'll go ahead and read a little bit about your bio for those of you that uh, don't know you as well as some of us do. Anna has been a midwife for 18 years. She's got a passion for relational, humanised and rights-based midwifery care for all. And she has worked across the UK as a caseload team and birth centre midwife. Before moving into her current role as a midwifery educator and researcher at the University of Central Lancashire, she led infant feeding services in a local maternity service, implementing the UNICEF UK Baby Friendly Initiative. Yay, we know how hard that is, so salute you for that. In 2019, she completed her PhD with the Maternal and Infant Nutrition and Nurture Unit at UCLan. She is a member of the UNICEF UK Baby Friendly Qualifications Board and Designation Committee. She is co-director of all 4 maternitycom and publishes the Practicing Midwife and Student Midwife journals. I think she probably actually never sleeps. She was awarded a National Teaching Fellowship Award in 2019 for her contribution to midwifery education. She uh, leads the MSc Midwifery at UCLan and is Principal Investigator with uh, the main and Thrive centres and units there, leading research projects exploring collaborative learning in practice and continuity of carer across undergraduate education and midwifery continuity of carer throughout Lancashire and South Cumbria. Let's go ahead and welcome the amazing Dr. Anna Byram. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, thanks, honestly, for um, your huge support, Jane, in preparing for today, but also to Linda and Ali and Chris and the incredible team um, creating this space for sharing and learning and caring for each other over two days and around the world. It feels a real honour to be here with you all and so wonderful to see so many familiar names um, in the chat and on the, online today. So a big hello to my lovely friends and, and colleagues and to see lovely new names and to hear from so many of you. Um, thank you for joining this session. So today I'm sharing with you some of my research work uh, that's just started this year, exploring what I believe to be a really crucial and essential part of my work as an educator is finding uh, and enabling relational continuity of carer opportunities for future midwives. And it's lovely to hear Jane welcoming our student colleagues onto the call because you are our future. And I've got lots of fellow uh, educators as well on the call, so it's really wonderful to be in this space with you. I'd like to just take a moment to introduce a couple of my colleagues who helped prepare the slides. So Carol Mashardi is the lead midwife for education at the University of Central Lancashire in the UK. Each university that offers midwifery training and education has a lead midwife for education to enable quality and to help with curriculum development. And Carol led our most recent curriculum development to be in line with the new Nursing and Midwifery Council standards in the UK that were um, actually uh, supported by Jane's sister, Professor Mary Renfrew. Um, so we're really excited to be able to work towards those new standards. And then my colleague, Nisha Ridley from, from UCLan, who's currently working with Health Education England in a, in a workforce and education transformation and expansion role, helping to really make room for more students to become midwives in the UK, which is what we need in the UK and around the world. Um, and we're hearing lots about that with all of the amazing social media from the uh, ICM, uh, all about investing in midwives and in each other and the need to follow the data in the massive impact that universal care for midwives can bring. So this presentation is brought to you from, from, from all of us and also the research team that's involved in supporting student midwife continuity of carer at UCLan and beyond. So in this presentation, I'm going to be sharing some of the context for the work that we're undertaking. 
and then give you some insights from my colleague Carol has gone done a little video and um, so she's going to tell you a little bit about how we created our curricula and hopefully that will give some insights for those of us on the call that are involved in developing curriculum and are interested in particular in embedding continuity of care experiences for students and then I'll talk to you a little bit about the research evaluation and the ways that we're hoping to transform things within our organisation, but across our whole system, across the region and then nationally as well in the UK. So why midwifery continuity of carer for student future midwives? So um, we've been working really closely with Nisha Ridley in our locality. So we're based um, at UCLan in Preston in the United Kingdom. And this is in the Northwest region in Lancashire and South Cumbria. So our students are placed in one of four maternity sites in that area. And we're really interested in learning how we can support students. And we asked ourselves this question, why is midwifery continuity of care is so important for future midwives education? Well, the reason for us is that it's actually about centering the, the woman, the person and the family at the heart of the education that we offer to student midwives and wrapping our curriculum around that family unit, however that family may look, is the goal of any curricula, any midwifery curricula. And rather than focusing and centering on the institution, on the education institution, or the placement areas, we feel it's really crucial that any education that we develop actually has that family and that, that woman, that person that we care for as midwives right at the heart and putting them at the heart of everything. What do they need from future midwives? What do they need from our education um, curriculum and approaches? Helps to direct a really holistic approach to curriculum design and development. But in the UK, there are also a range of uh, key drivers. Um, and obviously a lot of this is underpinned by key and up-to-date information and evidence. So we've got the amazing Lancet Midwifery series um, that was pulled together by an incredible team of researchers um, led by Professor Mary Renfrew. And you can read all of those open access papers um, from 2014 and they're setting an amazing tone for how we should develop quality maternal and newborn care and the, the quality framework for maternal and newborn care is an amazing tool for any educator to think about how they can develop um, the curriculum to meet the needs of families based on global evidence and information. We've also got local and national evidence on how midwifery continuity of carer, relational continuity of carer improves outcomes for women, birthing people and families, but also improves well-being for staff and staff satisfaction, which is really important. Um, you know, midwives uh, and like other health professionals, you know, want to seek good job satisfaction and feel good about our work and get a lot of meaning and generate meaning in our work and a lot of that meaning for midwives comes from relational care. We've then got the Better Births Transformation Agenda that was um, a review of maternity services in, in the UK and in, across England actually and because our university is in, set in England that's help, this framework helps to govern our approach to strengthening maternity services. So this set out ways to improve care um, for families and by reviewing all of the maternity services, listening to what families wanted and then setting out an agenda. We're coming towards the end of that Better Births agenda, but it's been most of the principles set out in that uh, transformation agenda have been picked up by the NHS long term plan. And a big component of both the Better Births and the NHS plan agendas links to the maternity and midwifery continuity of carer. And then we've more recently had the NMC standards that set out the requirements to become a midwife or the learner and those standards of proficiency for midwives and also sets out um, the standards for supervision and assessment in practice and also the standards for educational institutions and practice learning partners. 
So that's really guiding us to think about that. So the NMC is the Nursing and Midwifery Council in the UK that regulates um, midwif midwifery as a profession and ensures good educational standards um, for educational programmes in the UK. And we also have uh, national maternity workforce strategies that really also set out intentions around how many students should be trained in order to meet the needs of the service and to provide optimal care to women and families. So they set out targets for workforce. But we know that everybody around the world has been have been facing huge challenges in supporting effective student learning because of COVID-19. That's had a massive impact on staffing and service demands. We also know that when we want to change practice and change approaches to education, it can be really difficult because all change requires huge transition and it requires people to do things differently. And, you know, that can be really difficult, especially in the context of COVID. And we know that um, like many areas of healthcare, there can be challenges with recruitment, retention and staffing that can really have a knock on effect on learning for students as well. So whilst we've got amazing policy uh, directives and evidence to support what we should do, we have to remember that we also have some challenging contexts and uh, consequences because of the global pandemic. So these, uh, we know that by using some of this evidence, we can really make a difference. And as a university and many universities now, because we're validating against the Nursing and Midwifery Council standards, these have been actually set alongside the framework for quality maternal newborn health. So this is the Lancet series um, framework that was developed from mapping and charting all the evidence that's out there about what women, people and families want from the care and what components of care matter for improved outcomes. And we know from the Midwifery Lancet series that midwifery care improves over 56 outcomes for mothers and babies. And actually the features of effective care are included in this diagram. So if you haven't already had a look at the Lancet Midwifery series, I would really recommend that you read it um, because it's still relevant today in 2021. We should really be using this to set out some of the practice categories, how we organise our care as midwives, what values should underpin our practice and the importance of philosophy, midwifery philosophy and how we should be functioning as care providers, how we should balance our knowledge and skills and respecting um, cultural safety and cultural um, influences on people's lives and experiences. So the Nursing and Midwifery Council standards of proficiency in the UK have been um, launched in early 2019. Yeah, and part of these standards have been to provide safe and effective midwifery care, promoting and providing continuity of care and carer. So you can see there, there are six domains within the standards, but domain two clearly sets out that student midwives have to demonstrate at the point of qualification that they are proficient at providing and promoting and supporting continuity of care and carer. And actually, as a university, we, when we reviewed these brilliant and important standards, we realised that if you support students to offer continuity of care and carer, they will actually develop all of the other domains. So they will also develop the skills to be an accountable, autonomous professional midwife. They will learn how to provide universal care for all women and newborn infants. They'll learn about the importance of additional care for those women and newborn infants with complications. And they'll learn how to be an excellent colleague, scholar and leader. And of course, develop themselves as a skilled practitioner. So this is why we wanted to really focus in our curriculum on centering continuity of care experiences because we feel that by doing that it centers women people and families 
it will offer a transforming learning experience and environment for students, which will enable good quality learning opportunities, whilst also helping to increase the capacity and allowing more learners to have opportunities to become midwives by following women and families. And it will help to prepare the future workforce to, to meet those drivers that I talked about, meeting the Better Births agenda in the NHS long-term plan. So we really felt confident that this was a really important and good approach to take when we were looking at our curriculum development. So I'm now going to um, share a video with you from our mid-principal lecturer, Carol Mashadi, who will talk you through our steps to creating our curriculum, um, which as you'll hear from Carol, really centres the uh, importance of following women and families through and, and providing continuity of care along with other things. So I'm gonna, I know Jane, you're gonna share a little video now. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Carol Mashardi and I'm the Principal Lecturer and Lead Midwife for Education at the University of Central Lancashire. I want to share with you today the midwifery team journey for our new curriculum through to the successful approval event. The curriculum planning process for the preparation of the three course proposed which are a BSc midwifery, a BSc and MSc shortened programme, occurred over approximately 18 months. Although it feels significantly longer due to the impact that COVID-19 had on our original plans, which I know many of us have been affected by. The initial stages of development involved education and service staff working collaboratively to design an experience for the students that is grounded in practice and underpinned by evidence. Current students, practice placement representatives and service users were involved in the planning process to ensure a truly collaborative approach was taken throughout this time. The, the courses developed were driven by the NMC standards of pre-registration midwifery programmes, including part one, standards framework for nursing and midwifery education, part two, standards for student supervision and assessment, and part three, standards of proficiency for midwives. During the initial stages of development for this programme, academic staff, stakeholder groups, which included clinical staff, service users and students, were consulted to canvas their views on the current programme and the future development mapped to the new NMC standards. This facilitated collaboration in developing the programme structure, themes, modules and teaching, learning and assessment strategies. To fully embrace the new standards, a number of key themes were identified which either needed adding or enhancing in our current curriculum. And the key changes that we are specific to this programme are the introduction of the newborn infant physical examination, continuity of care and carer, flexible assessment strategy with optional choices, BFI, interprofessional learning integrated into cases and relevant to midwifery practice, and involvement of service users in programme planning, case design and delivery. The midwifery curriculum planning team collectively agreed to continue but further develop the already established midwifery and educational philosophies of salutogenesis and case-based learning, as this was well reflected in the feedback from the focus groups. The team felt the curriculum theme should reflect the six domains of the NMC standards of proficiency for midwives and wrap around the midwifery and educational philosophies. The programme, modular structure, module titles, length and credit value were agreed collectively, with task and finish groups being convened to determine module aims, content, learning outcomes, teaching, learning and assessment strategies. The philosophy of our midwifery educational programmes is underpinned by a salutogenic orientation to healthcare which stems from Antonovsky's theory. This represents an approach that has moved away from the traditional pathological paradigm of dichotomizing normal, abnormal, and low risk, high risk to perceived health on a continuum. The curriculum is designed to ensure that learning skills development and care delivery are focused on the promotion of health and well-being, irrespective of the classification of risk assigned to the woman, baby, or family. 
and that both education and practice are sensitive to the socio-cultural context of all individuals concerned. Salutogenesis informed the selection of case-based learning methodology, enabling a woman, baby and family-centred curriculum that also meets students' individual learning needs. CBL as a student centred approach to learning invites students to work in small teams to review case scenarios from midwifery practice. The cases ensure students consider the holistic needs of women and families whilst building their midwifery knowledge and skills aligned with the quality framework for maternal and newborn health and NMC standards. Individual cases are supported by core learning activities, including simulation and through appropriate work-based learning. The midwifery curriculum planning team agreed that learning is a situated, contextualised activity that is integral to and inseparable from social practice. As midwifery is a social practice, students of midwifery work alongside experienced practitioners in placements in order to develop their learning and skills as they engage with others in routine, tacit and explicit collaboration. Students are exposed to new and challenging situations guided by qualified supervisors and assessors in the practice settings to become fully participating members of the midwifery profession at the point of qualification. This transformative approach to learning and teaching is also employed in the university setting as it is deemed to be effective at capturing the meaning making process of adult learners. A spiral curriculum enables topics to be introduced generally and revisited more specifically at increasing levels of complexity as the programme progresses. Longer modules facilitate integration of curriculum themes and allow the programme team through collaborative timetabling to create links across subjects and thereby enhance the student learning experience. Feedback is seen as an important component of learning and teaching. This is given formally and informally to individual students and groups to enhance their learning experience. As students need to experience a variety of settings and models of maternity care, the programme has reflected this in the planners, with continuity models being uh, used throughout the course, alongside in-hospital provision and specialist services, including neonatal and multidisciplinary provision. A focus on the continuity in the final period will help to prepare students for registration and becoming the future midwife. During the planning, the team were keen to fully embrace the continuity theme embedded within the new midwifery standards and the concept of the gestational curriculum emerged. By mapping the gestational pathway of a woman through her maternity experience, the team mapped a corresponding curriculum with the aim to have students on placement at critical points during the woman's experience. From the sample planner, you can see the students are in placement between 19 to 17 weeks, 27 to 36 weeks and 39 to three weeks postnatal. The hope is that students can fully engage in continuity of care in this new curriculum, unlike our current model of case holding, which can be limited with requirements for theoretical attendance. Within the theory elements of the programme, recognition has been given to the varied learning styles of adult learners and aligned with the university's learning and teaching strategy. A range, of, a range of assessment methods is used throughout the programme to facilitate students' development and progression. The curriculum has been developed to be inclusive, applied, flexible and sustainable, with the introduction of flexible assessment strategies and varied modes of achieving the theoretical elements within the modules. The accessible learning and assessment enable people, irrespective of their backgrounds, to fulfil their potential and meet their life and career goals. In January, following an approval event in November, we had confirmation that our programmes have been fully approved. But this is not the end, just the beginning. Now we need to work to implement these innovative programmes. Thank you for listening.
Oh, it's lovely to have Carol being able to join and share with us and have an opportunity to share the really important work that she and the team have done to really centre families at the heart of our curriculum. And we hope it does give opportunities um, to inspire other people that will be working really hard towards developing their education curriculum. And certainly that anyone working around the world's welcome to get in touch with us to talk about the practical side of things and, and the work that we did and how we came to build this approach. So um, basically, I just wanted to share now um, some insights from the research that we're doing, which we hope will learn um, uh, help us to learn ways that we need to approach the support that students need, but also um, practice learning midwives and colleagues that are supporting learning in practice, what their needs are, but also, of course, most importantly, women, families and the people that we care for. So I actually just wanted to um, introduce my other colleague, Christina Feltham, who's a midwifery educator at the University of Cumbria. This piece of work is being done in collaboration with the two midwifery, uh, midwifery training schools um, in Lancashire and South Cumbria. There's two universities that offer midwifery training and education. So we're working together to do this. And I believe that collaboration is the best way to approach transformation in midwifery education. So I, I want to talk now about our project supporting and sustaining midwifery continuity of care for future midwives. So we have gone from, or we're in the process of transitioning from a placement orientated learning. When students go out into practice alongside the theoretical components of their degree programme, we often and historically have placed them in uh, very specific placement settings. So, for example, they've been placed in a community setting or in a hospital setting. And within the hospital, that's been placements such as antenatal ward, birthing centres, delivery suites or postnatal wards and others such as neonatal units um, gyne gynaecology wards and departments. Early, early pregnancy assessment units and, and wider services within in the health system. But this has been very much driven by the placement and the students have become part of the service and followed the service. And what we're aiming to do with our new curriculum is to encourage the students to follow women and families. So no longer will they be going to specific placements, they will be meeting specific families and following the journey that family will take through all of those placement areas. So they will still go and do community vi uh, visits and community care and antenatal ward-based care as appropriate and intranatal care in birthing centres, homes, or at delivery suites or obstetric units, and obviously we'll offer care on postnatal wards, but this will all be wrapped around the families that they're caring for. And this is the big transition that we are making and requires a lot of practical thinking through of how we offer this support. And so we are leading um, a, a research programme to help. We are basing this on the amazing work that has come out from um, from around the world, especially in Australia. There's fantastic um, insights and research being done from especially around the Gold Coast and, and the university there. So it's Griffith University has put lots and lots of um, information out and, and research out about the benefits. Not, not only the benefits for women and families have been provided care in this way from students, but also um, students' experiences in their learning journey. So we know that it actually improves outcomes for learners. It improves outcomes for women and families. 
I just wondered if people could remember just to keep their um, their microphones muted, because um, I think I can hear somebody's got their um, microphone on. Thank you. But we'll look forward to having some questions later. So what we're interested in doing is learning from the research evidence about continuity of care, but also applying um, our own experiences locally. So this is our locality here. You can see we're close to Blackpool and the coast. Um, in the northwest of England, just underneath Scotland, so we're quite high up in 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 the in the UK in England, and we've got four maternity sites that are in our local system, our local area. So, four hospitals that students um, and maternity services that students will engage with, um, and. We are interested in offering students an opportunity to work in small teams together with midwives and community teams and inv get involved in a coaching and peer learning opportunities so that we will be building on collaborative in learning and practice principles, which is a movement from one to one mentorship models where a student works with one mentor building on the new NMC standards for supervision and assessment in practice, we're moving to a coaching model where a group of peers will work alongside one midwife coach um, to learn together. Um, and that's really important for developing that scholarship, that collaborative working and learning, uh, sharing learning together, because we want to keep a really positive culture in practice. So, uh, the project that we're running is a great, uh, amazing research team have come together to share expertise and experience. So I'm leading this project, but working alongside Professor Jill Thompson, Professor Sue Down, who are giving me their support um, as a junior researcher. And we've also got a fantastic team of research um, fellows and associates. So Dr. Kenny Finlayson, Dr. Clive Palmer, Dr. Claire Feely, Christine Feltham and John T. Kenwood. And these, uh, this team are made up of practitioners with skills and, and, uh, and confidence in practice learning and approaches to practice learning, educators so that we can make sure that we attend to the education needs and curriculum development needs, and then others that are involved in coaching, collaborative learning, and um, also uh, midwifery research so that we can bring all the expertise together. And then alongside the researchers, we also have an amazing range of students um, who are going to be piloting midwifery continuity of carer over the next six months to help us learn together, to build together an amazing toolkit of resources for staff and students and to ensure that our curriculum plans over the next year and beyond are going to offer safe learning opportunities but also meet the needs of both students, the service and obviously families in the care. So we're interested in developing guidance, looking at what practice equipment is needed, we're interested in evaluating student experiences and learning what the supervisors and assessors need in practice. After the first six months, we'll have this really lovely framework that will help us to understand what we do need to do going forward when we increase the student numbers to more than just the pilot group. And over the next 12 months, from really from October for a full year, an academic year for us in the UK, runs from September to September, we're going to track then a full cohort of students and continue with this evaluation project just to be sure that we understand the kind of needs of students, but also the service and the provision required. So we're really looking forward to being able to share that. Perhaps next year we can come back and share where we're up to with our learning. And then in addition to that, um, we've reached out to the National um, Continuity of Care team working with NHS England and Professor Trixie McCree leads that programme. And we've been uh, invited to be part of the national subgroup looking at developing a toolkit for educators, students and beyond. Because I just think rather than us doing this in one area of the UK, it'd be great if we could have a national approach that obviously then can be shared globally um, so that we can understand if you're developing a curriculum, what things do you need to consider for your course plans and modules? But also if you're supporting students in practice, what do you need to consider to enable this, whether you've got continuity teams existing or not? 
and then what students need to prepare to work in this way as a student but then beyond obviously as you transition to qualification and our Royal College of Midwives in the UK has put together a really helpful um, series to support us and it's about supporting that ongoing development so I you know Mary Scott Davis um, and Leah Briganti are doing amazing work with the RCM to support this approach for students. So that brings me to sort of the end of the presentation um, it'd be nice now just to play a little summary video um, to kind of pull together these key messages that you could take forward into your practice. I think uh, that will be shared now. Thanks everybody and I think we've still got a little bit of time um, for any questions. I know people have been commenting um, throughout. Oh, I can see Jenny Hall. Hi Jenny. <laughs> I think the main question I'm seeing is um, Celine and a few people were asking about could you talk about the work life work balance for young midwives and then we need to finish up in about five minutes. Thank you. Okay, yeah. So these are the things that we'd like to learn through the project is understanding that because we what we found from the research that we've done before this piece of research was with continuity of care and midwives themselves and teams of midwives that are already established. And we've learned that actually um, from that locally to us that um, it really strengthens work life balance. Uh, working in these mo models that are very flexible and adaptable. So we want to make sure that we put in really supportive programmes of support for students um, that will include preparation, support along the way, and we're learning with students how to navigate those things. And I suppose it's going to be different for every type of student and learner, what their home life experiences are what issues are cropping up so it's about having a flexible and adaptable approach to this that allows for those you know shifts and changes that we see to people's lives as they, they move forwards so I hope, hopefully that answers the questions in part I think once we've completed this evaluation work we'll have definitely better insights into um, what particular issues arise for students and then how we can overcome and navigate those and Jenny's asking, how do you see issues of students meeting NMC requirements when they're all having different experiences in different areas? Yeah, that's a really good question. Again, it's part of what we want to try and find out and learn together. But we know that um, students will be working in small teams so continuity teams where they're able to learn from each other's caseloads as well and attend with each other to appointments to offer learning opportunities in that collaborative approach, which is similar to how the midwifery continuity of care teams um, work now. So having some group opportunities and we also, alongside the centre of their learning will be continuity of carer, but then we've also mapped the capacity in the core areas of the service. So students will also be able to book themselves on around their caseload to those other opportunities and learning. So we'll be creating a whole learning opportunity list and students can book themselves on to those wider learning um, opportunities. So that's what, how we're hoping to address it, but I think, the sort of balance will be um, something that we review as we 
continuously work through just like we have to do now you know students some students can end up with imbalances where they've only end up seeing cesareans because that happens to be what happens on their shifts and other multiple shifts and we need to relook at that with them so i think it's just doing what we always have done in that regard hope that's answered people's questions but if you if you'd like to find out more then you can email us my email address is there um, at UCLan or really happy to come and chat to people and, and offer any support and also Caitlin Wilson is, is leading the national group so if there's UK midwives that want to be involved or contribute to that it'd be amazing. Well I think that was such a fantastic comprehensive presentation it's so inspiring for educators, midwives, student midwives. Uh, I think I heard you call yourself a junior researchers so it's like you're yeah. just like respect uh anna thank you so much and again would you mind typing i can see your email there but if anyone would like to contact you we will be yeah. posting um the recording uh, as well and so good thank you for all the resources in the chat it's so good that uh, we're able to share all these resources as well